Seven o'clock. All right. This is my first time chairing a committee, so if you can bear with me. Um, so we're going to call uh, the Planning and Economic Development Committee public hearing on the petition for rezoning of Gatewills, Gateway Hills off Research Drive. And uh, we'll have the public hearing with pro versus con. We'll go through it that way. But at first, um, just make, we don't need to do a roll call during public hearing, right? Yes, we you do. do. We do. Okay. Um, should we do the nominations of the clerk now or wait till the general meeting? You do, do, do follow the, the script. That the script was roll call that roll first. Call. Yeah. Okay. You, do the, you can do the roll call. Right. If you want, I can help you and do the roll call. Yes, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, Vice Chairman O'Brien. All right. Alderman Derek Tiabo. Here. Alderman at large Ben Clemens. Here. Alderman John Cathy. Present. Alderman at large Michael O'Brien is present. And Alderman at large Melbourne Morin. Present. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you have five members present. All right. So call, do the clerk. Pardon? Do I have a motion for, yes. for a nomination of our committee clerk? Uh, Traditionally, has have you yes. looked around to? We have. Uh, I was hoping he would know well, himself. I'd be oh. willing. <laughs> I'd be willing to make the motion. Who would Derek. you? Huh? Derek. Okay. Yeah. If I do, you want me to make the motion, yes, Mr. Please. Chair? Okay. Uh, I would like to make a motion uh, to nominate Alderman Tiabot as the Planning and Economic Development Committee Clerk. Uh, committee clerk. All those in favor, say aye. No, no, you have to. to close the nomination. Oh, uh, any other nominations? Okay. Are you sure? All right. All right. Ben, you want to make the motion to close nomination? I move to close nominations. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Congratulations. Um, uh, no, now you need some I motion to. to now, now you have to move to elect him. Now you have uh, to move to elect him. All right. I move <laughs> to elect him. Get it. Uh, Alderman Tebow as uh, clerk of PDC. All, All those, those in favor? favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Congratulations. I'll get it. You did a great job. Another, I'll do it. It, it, it worked. It For worked. the record, wonderful job. All right. So now we'll have the public hearing. And um, if we could have the petitioner come up and speak first, then we'll have the city, and then we'll go um, those for, who are for it and then against it in that rotation. Do we have a list of those people that signed up as well? No. Oh. Let's make sure they all know that they can I sign know. up if they haven't, if they're new. Uh, it's just, the, uh, just the agenda. All right. We, we can have just people come up. Yeah, it's not that big. All right. Anyone from the John Flatley Company here to make a presentation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Gerald Prunier. I'm an attorney in Nashville, New Hampshire, with an address of 20 Trafalgar Square. I'm here representing the um, applicant this evening, the Thomas uh, John Flatley Company, regarding some rezoning of the property. I think you're familiar with the Flatley property or the location of Flatley property in the South End. Um, it's a large tract of land. On one side, they have over 200 acres, and on the other side, f over 400 acres. Um, at the present time, they have apartments in this area here, because it's, this is zone RC. The purple here is zone Park Industrial. What we are requesting of this board, of the board of is to rezone this piece that I am marking here on the board into an RC. We're changing it from this, uh, from Park Industrial to RC. We intend to construct multifamily uh, residences in, in that particular area. I forgot to mention, I also have with me this evening uh, other professionals that are willing to help to answer any questions that the board or chairman may have regarding this rezoning. Our purpose is, again, as I stated, to construct some multifamily housing and some townhouses in that particular area. 
Um, we are prepared uh, to make improvements that would be required of us from the planning board uh, for traffic improvements and other improvements that may be necessary from the uh, planning board. Um, we have appeared before the planning board. Uh, they make a recommendation to this committee and, and the Board of Aldermen. Um, I think you have a letter dated February 18th, 2022 um, from various members of the staff uh, indicating uh, that, that they are in favor of the uh, rezoning. Uh, I will also state that I think you should have uh, some either minutes of the meeting or a, a letter from the planning board that voted unanimously in favor of the rezoning. If you have any other questions, we'll be glad to answer them. I think at, uh, if you can stick around for when we uh, turn it over yeah. to the, uh, the, uh, the elder. Thank Chairman. you. Thank you. And now, uh, Director Sullivan. Good evening, members of the committee. Matt Sullivan, for the record, the Community Development Director for the city. Uh, just for clarification, on Attorney Bernier's comments, the Planning Board did, in fact, vote unanimously to recommend. What I would add is just a stipulation. They did do so with consideration given to the staff letter dated February 16th of 2022 and the petitioner's letter dated February 17th, 2022, which reflected commitments to complete the Spiffer Road improvements as part of the proposed applications considered. My comments this evening will be very brief, but certainly either myself, Director Cummings, or Dan Hudson, who I believe is attending via Zoom this evening, are available to answer questions should the committee have, and are certainly willing to participate in any discussion the committee has as you deem appropriate. I simply want to comment briefly on the fact that, as you can see from the February 16 letter, staff did formally memorialize their comments and concerns related to the proposed rezoning of the Flatley, uh, the area contemplated by the Flatley rezoning petition. Specifically, as part of that letter, we identified three overall concerns with the rezoning and the general development of the Flatley properties that I want to quickly overview. Number one, we wanted to urge the committee and the Board of Aldermen, and certainly the Planning Board as a subsequent actor, to carefully consider what the appropriate offsite mitigation is for the pr proposed rezoning. One of our critical concerns is although the applicant or the petitioner has committed to the improvements as part of the Planning Board process, we feel that the compounded impacts of the development of the Flatley properties warrant those improvements being required by the aldermanic process and the rezoning directly, rather than uh, leaving that for the planning board to consider as part of their application. Number two, we have continued to urge the alderman and certainly the petitioner to consider uh, supporting the develop and a, de a development agreement that codifies within the zoning ordinance a clear and precise and predictable vision for how the future development of the flatly owned properties will be done both for the petitioner's interests and also for the city and the abutter's interests, reflecting that they have an open conversation about what development work will occur. And third, we have urged that a master development concept plan be developed that generally and in an amendable fashion reflects the proposed uses and the extents of the uses on the properties, not only contemplated by this rezoning application, but also subsequent developments of the petitioner and the owner. Again, I want to urge that Director Cummings, Engineer Hudson, and myself are available to answer questions that you might have. I want to note specifically, though, that we do not object strictly to the proposed rezoning and the multifamily units and townhouses proposed as part of this re the rezoning petition and what will subsequently, sub subsequently be a planning board action. What we do want to caution, I think, this committee on and certainly provide some concern around is the, the fact that we want there to be a transparent conversation with the city and the public about what the long-term development of the flatly owned properties actually looks like. And we believe that those concerns should be addressed as part of this process. I want to thank you for your consideration of our letter, dated February 16, of these remarks this evening, and we are happy to answer any questions that you might have. All right, thank you, Director Sullivan. You probably also can hang around a bit. A bit. Sure. Um, so what we'll do next is um, members in the chamber, I'm sorry, not members, uh, members of the public in the chamber who are for it and against it will speak first and they'll go to Zoom and they'll rotate and uh, we'll just go, go from there and get through this day and listen to everyone's concerns. Is there anyone in favor who would like to speak? If anyone on Zoom wants to speak, if you can raise your hand. 
Come on up. Just your name and address for the record, please. I'm Reverend Sally Newhall. I live at uh, 33 Digital Drive <laughs> in Fotley uh, here in Nashua. Um, I am a member of a group of clergy here in Nashua. We call ourselves the Interfaith uh, Housing Justice Group, and we've been very concerned and in conversation with uh, the leaders of uh, the Nashua staff about our concerns, making sure that there's enough affordable housing in Nashua. I think the Fotley property obviously does need to be developed. Um, we have a great need in Nashua for more housing, as I think you're all aware of. One concern I have, and what I'd just like to inject at this point in the planning process rather than down the road, is that the inclusionary zoning plan, which is approved and is great, aims, aims at 80% MIMI. I'm hoping that uh, as the Flatley property is developed, that they will inc also include property for folks who live at 50% of AMI, and that our housing trust fund will be able to help make that possible. So I wanted to put that before the planning board, and I guess you're a planning and economic board, but um, tonight, so that we've often discovered that when we come up with our ideas, you tell us it's too late in the planning process. I'm hoping this is early enough in the planning process that you can take it into account. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And just for the record, were you opposed or in favor? I think the property needs to be developed. That's what I said. Yeah, okay. that's, that's for In the middle. It? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so someone opposed? I'm not necessarily opposed. I, I you can't really see the map. I'm not even sure where the I live on, uh, on Maysfield Road. My name is Peter Sola. I'm not really sure where the proposed um, land is going to be to develop. Mr. Chairman, yeah. point of order. Order. Uh, the honorable gentleman who used to be a state rep. But when he comes up to the microphone, he has to identify himself with the address Got it. for the transcript purposes, because the trans person that won't know who was Who's actually speaking. speaking. Well, yep. One, oh, one other point of minutes. order as well. We, the way the public hearing should be conducted are that you take testimony in favor, anyone who wants to come up and speak in order, All right. then opposition, then in favor again, then in opposition, Got rather it. than back and no, forth. forth. Perfect. Collaboration is great. <laughs> uh, so, uh, first of all, my question. Uh, yeah, Peter yep. Silva, 18 Maysfield Road. All right, and as you heard, I made a mistake, which I own up to, and uh, we'll have you <laughs> speak right. in opposition, then we'll go back to where you're supposed to be. Um, th that was my main question. I wanted to see where it was because I was confused. I never saw the map before, but um, now I just explain it to me. So, I'm, I'm good for now. Thank you. All right. So, we'll go back to approve on. In favor, is there anyone on Zoom that would like to speak in favor? Raise your hand. Anyone left in the chamber who would like to speak in favor? Can I speak? Uh, just, well, uh, we've already had you speak once. I just want to get through everyone else first. All right. We'll go back to the in favors in a second. Thanks to yes. Alderman Clemens yes. pointing that out. Uh, anyone opposed? My name is Christy Hart. I'm on 9 Dustin Drive. Um, my neighborhood is currently at risk of being infiltrated by a flatly development. Um, I intended to express my concern when that final meeting happens, but some of those concerns do trickle down into um, concerns with rezoning this property. A 58 unit subdivision, approximately 116 new vehicles are um, going to be put in at an area off of exit four. Um, I strongly believe that these new vehicles will create an issue with Nashua traffic around exits one and four, since all new residents will be funneled to only one entry point. I anticipate that ward eight, which is my ward, ward nine, and potentially ward six, residents will feel the brunt of this development. If this rezoning gets approved, it will put a nail in the coffin for the whole area because these 58 units will be will reroute people who ordinarily, ordinarily get off exit four to exit one. This will worsen exit one, Bicentennial Elementary School area. The Shell Station, et cetera, people on Harris Road will all get backed up. So if rezoning this property is approved before even seeing the aftershock of the new units, exit one will be impossible. Nashua can't handle more residents stuffed into this single, into this spot. Furthermore, the positive stigma that comes with living here will likely no longer be relevant. Commuting to Boston will become more difficult. 
The convenience of shopping will actually become extraordinarily difficult to navigate through in an area you probably want to avoid, if possible. Schools and teachers will become more burdened, and the rural city cross atmosphere that we have developed here will be gone because you'll enter Nashua and you'll just see buildings. Nashua becomes more like Manchester if this becomes approved and less of what we're kind of hoping to develop. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Allison Dreyer on Zoom. Hi, Allison Dyer, and I inspire Drive. Um, I'm kind of in the middle on it um, because I've, I've just started reviewing the plans for it, but I, I think I'm kind of concerned with the, the scale and the density of what the developers are bringing forward. I'm hopeful that you, you would consider a wider, more vast traffic study as the housing development appears to be insular with just one way in, one way out. I feel it may be detrimental without some good roads and paths uh, to the other areas. So getting around can take an unnecessarily long time, causing congestion and um, some safety issues for the children and families that are in these neighborhoods. Additionally, um, I'm not sure I can find in the paperwork, do we know if there are any easements with the property? Um, because as many of you know, easements don't necessarily have to be written into the deed to exist. So there could be negative easements to the current new long-term residents of this area, whether utility, necessity, or prescriptive. I see in the reports that the police and fire are mentioned, but I did not see any in-depth analysis of what the local community impacts may be like. Are there stormwater impacts that will be realized about the impacts on the local school enrollments? Um, is there adequate water and sewer infrastructure available to meet the new demand? Um, I just think some more work needs to be done here for a real thorough and cohesive plan between the developers and the current residents of this area of our city. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dreyer. Um, how do you pronounce that name, Derek? Uh, Laura Colquhoun. Laura Colquhoun? Colquhoun. Colquhoun. On Zoom. Hi, Laura Colquhoun at 30 Greenwood Drive. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm for it or against it. I am very concerned about the traffic, and I don't think um, that anybody can really make a judgment call at this point until we have a further study of the traffic that will be in that area and how it's going to affect the other neighborhoods. Uh, when you put that kind of a building in, there's going to be a, lo a lot more traffic, and it. You know, it's going to stop people from enjoying, you know, what Nashua is all about. So I would prefer that we have flatly uh, do a, a, an actual study on the traffic there and, you know, maybe have more roads. Maybe flatly we'll have to put in more roads so that uh, it's not backed up in, into other other areas. Um, I just think more planning has to be done before anybody can say yes or no. Uh, I thank you. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Gohan. Anyone else opposed? Opposed? All right. Back to in favor. You want to add some stuff? And it, just again, your name and address of the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to speak because. Oh, uh, I just. Sorry, I need your name and address one more time. I know you already okay, spoke. Sure. My name is Gerald Furnier. I'm an attorney for the applicant, and my offices are 20 Trafalgar Square in Nashua. Uh, I want to speak because I want to, it's, it's difficult for me to speak with, with certain issues when Matt Sullivan has, has, has not been here very long and is not aware of the whole history of what's been going on with the Flatley Company. And so I want to bring you up to date on some of the things that were discussed by Matt. And I... And the purpose of that is that I would not like to see any type of zoning uh, have conditions upon it that, with the conditions that they are looking for, which the planning board will take care of. They can take care of those conditions if it's rezoned. And they will then not only know what's going in, so they can require the improvements that are necessary. But one thing was mentioned about mitigation. I've been around for almost 50 years. I've been around this area. I've been doing this in Nashua since the late 60s. There's always mitigation at the planning board. There's always traffic improvements that have to be made. All of these things done. And we've already done the traffic report. 
ready for to do this. And we're ready to do the traffic improvements if the city of Nashville let us do it before we even go in for a site plan. And that's what I think Matt indicated, that there was a letter that, that we would do the improvements. The second thing was mentioned about a development agreement. Well, this is the third rendition of a draft development agreement was, that was with the city. We've been working on a development agreement for, for a while. Then Sarah left, and it sort of came to an end. Uh, we're very close, especially since you passed the affordable zoning, I mean, affordable uh, zoning ordinance, not zoning ordinance, but red, um, uh, Ms. Calhoun, you're, you're st you need to mute, mute yourself. What? You can mute her, can you? Oh. There's an option for you to mute her if you click on her profile. It passed the ordinance that uh, was affordable, which doesn't have to be included in the, in the development agreement any longer because the development agreement would be subject to that ordinance. So this has been going on for some time. Um, I tried to educate Matt with it a little bit this afternoon, and I think that he and I will uh, get this resolved as an issue very fast. Then about the master plans. Well, here's a copy of the master plan. This is the, within the, is in the city files. We've given the city this. Again, this has nothing to do with Matt because he probably hasn't got that deep in the, in the files yet. But here's a copy of another plan that was put in. Can you so send these plans are in the city. Can you send this to us as well in case, or we can get them from the city? Oh no, I don't need it now. If you can send us a copy of PDF to, the, to Donna sure. Graham and she can share it with all the other aldermen. Sure. So, I, I just want to let you know that Flatley hasn't been sitting on his hands. We've been trying to take care of the issues that the city has had. Interruption, we're going to be very close, uh, but the um, Sarah left. And now I've got hot nosed Matt to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> and so, my. Uh, I would like, if you're going to pass the ordinance, that the ordinance be passed clean and let the planning board take the issues with the things that need to be done for the city to afford those the plans that we want as far as the multifamily housing in the RC zone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Joe Gard Gard before. Yeah. Gardner? Support. Are you uh, for yes. or against this? <clears throat> Well, I have a, a, a very simple question here. Um, I, I live at, uh, in Nashwood's Three Spindlewood Drive. Are these gonna be rental units? Just, uh, if you could just state your name as well with your address. I did. Jo Joe Gardiner, oh. Three Spindlewood Drive in Nashua. Thank you. And my question has to do, are these gonna be rental units? I, I believe they're gonna be rental units. The answer is yes. All of them. But we'll clarify that too. Thank you. In well, can the lawyer answer that? Come up, if you're in favor, you can come up and speak. Obviously, you are. When we when we move to uh, end the uh, public comment, I'll ask um, both the petitioner and Director Sullivan that question, Mr. Gardner. You'll speak to it. Hey, everyone. My name is Kevin Walker. I'm with the John Flatley Company. And I just kind of want to clear up some of the questions that we've heard so far. I think a couple of the folks are actually talking about a single family subdivision that we have far north of this. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about tonight. That includes uh, 58 single family house lots. What we're talking about tonight is rezoning the portion between Tara Heights and uh, 100, 200, 300 innovative weight buildings to RC. So I just wanted to clear that up uh, with the committee just so we're all on the same page. We've got a couple comments regarding a different project that has nothing to do with what we're, we're discussing tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? Going once, twice, all right. Mr. Sullivan? 
to be opposed, I assume? Uh, I'm, or just I'm opposition. And right. hard nosed Matt, for the record. <laughs> um, <laughs> Matt Sullivan, community development director. I just want to be, and this is something that was actually within our letter. The, the rezoning simply rezones the property. It does not bind the petitioner to do the specific development that is contemplated and proposed within the petition. And so the applicant has clearly demonstrated that they want to do just below 300 units. They can either do fewer, they can do more potentially, they may change the development form that's being discussed within the petition. And so I just want to be clear that your support or your recommendation does not bind them to do a specific form of development. It simply gives them the right to do the multifamily that they're contemplating here. So I just want to point that out. So the question about will these be rental or ownership units, that ultimately will be reviewed by the planning board at a subsequent time. This really just is the key that opens the door for them to do a specific development form. Thank you, Director Sullivan. Anyone else opposed? Going once, twice. All right, having hearing no one else opposed and having gone through the public testimony, I would say the public hearing is declared closed at 7.26 p.m. All right, so now we'll go to the regular Planning and Economic Development Committee by, um, I'll turn it over to our new clerk to do the roll call. Alderman at large, Melbourne Moran, Jr. Present. Alderman at large, Michael B. O'Brien, Jr. Present. Alderman John Cathy. Present. Alderman at large, Ben Clemens. Here. And Alderman Derek Tebow is also here. And also with us is uh, Alderman Jetty and Alderman Woman at Large, uh, Gloria Timmons, and Alderman John Sullivan is uh, present with us on Zoom. All right, uh, do I have any public comment on what's gonna be planning to be acted on tonight? Would anyone like to speak? No, all right, Dis discussion on what we heard from the Alderman? Oh, I'm sorry. Are we calling economic I'm completely yeah. blew that off. Right. I jumped over that. Oh, right, right. We're all... So far, I think this is going okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Thanks. I'm going to get my gold star tonight. Yeah. Um, Director Cummings. Uh, Mr. Please Chair, can, may I make a suggestion that yeah. you take, out, take me out of order and you continue on with the agenda? I'll be happy to come at the end. Okay. Great. So what's next here? Communications. communications. There being no objection, I'll accept the communications uh, from Matt Sullivan, Community Development Director, RE Petition of Rezoning Gateway Hills uh, and, and place it on file. Without objection, uh, there being no objection, I will take uh, communication from Gene Deacon in opposition to petition of rezoning as accepted, the, accepting the communication and placing it on file. Petitions, petitions for re, uh, rezoning. So now we're gonna go back to Director Sullivan before we act on this, correct? Because this would be- Is this our discussion time? No, I think no. you're looking for a motion. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to do the reading, right? We have to do a motion so we can- discuss Start discussing, it. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to make a motion to recommend granting the petition for a rezoning. By roll call or by? No, it, it can be by all members are present, Mr. Chair, so it can't be by vote. All right. All in favor? Vote. Oh, uh, Alderman Cassidy. Discussion. Cassie. Legislative inquiry. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, you said approval of the petition. Wouldn't that be approving the petition uh, without reading, discussing it? Reading the script and basically to recommend granting the petition for rezoning. But we have to discuss recommending it before mm -hmm. we as, recommend as it. As by parliamentary procedure, now that a, a motion has been made, you are allowed to discuss the motion. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, right. So that's what Backwards, we're doing now. But yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. No. Oh, aye. Sorry. Oh. Wait. Well, no, oh. you, uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. to help out, I think Alderman. Kathy would like to speak. Oh, yeah. So after the motion has been made, may I recommend, yeah. suggest, then you go further discussion on the motion. Right, got it. Thank, right. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to uh, call up a few members just to ask a few questions, if I may. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, I have a clarifying question. 
Yeah, you mentioned about the the act of the rezoning versus other actions that we'll be taking. Is it my understanding correct that the planning board can or cannot attach re uh, other requirements to a rezoning or it's a very strict process of rezoning or not rezoning? So two, two processes to think about here. The, the planning board is a referral body within the rezoning process. And so as part of that referral to the planning board that took place in the month of February, the planning board makes a recommendation to the PEDC and subsequent, subsequently to the Board of Aldermen relative to the rezoning. Uh, that's the motion that I referred to where they acknowledged the staff letter of February 16th. Uh, that was the only condition, if you will, that they recognized within their referral role. Subsequently, if this rezoning is ultimately approved, or even if it's not, any development activity within the portion of land being considered will ultimately require the review of the city's planning board as part of a site plan review application or a subdivision application or the like. As part of that review process under their statutory duty, the planning board may attach additional conditions or stipulations. They may perhaps address traffic as part of those stipulations and ad adequately mitigating traffic associated with the proposal that they review at that time. But there are two independent processes and so the answer is yes, the board can attach stipulations at the site plan side of things and they can make a recommendation that has conditions as part of the rezoning process. Oh, great, thank you, I appreciate that. Of course. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yep. Uh, was it Jason? Yes. <clears throat> Jason, you mentioned that you travel and do tra traffic studies? Yes. Uh, can you record Jason Plord, VHB, on two Bedford Farms Road in Bedford, New Hampshire. Thank you. Can you speak to the traffic questions that, that came up in the public comment session? Sure. Um, so. I don't want to kind of mix different projects together, right? but the one that was referenced was off of Timberline Drive, East Dunstable Road, and that's where that other area is that's not going to be connected. Here. Right. I'm thinking more the exit one, Spip right, Rock, right. So Spip Rock I, Road. I just want to make sure that I'm addressing the correct questions. Okay. <laughs> um, so as far as uh, what we've done is we've prepared a trip generation letter that was dated August 8th, 2019. So this has been going on for a while for contemplation as far as taking a look at this area and really determining what would actually take place on this sketched out area, you know, where it's in, you know, with, it could be constructed research and development space versus what we're contemplating right now, which would be some residential. Now, if you think about the area in question, this whole area is pretty much office research development where more people are coming to this side of Spitbrook Road in the morning rather than leaving as a residential would. So the traffic patterns are gonna, would be different, right? So you have everybody coming in in the morning that are trying to get to work and then they stay there all day and then in the afternoon they come home. And that's typical of research development what this zone is currently allowed to occupy on the site. I'm not saying that it's proposed to be occupied by anything at this time. It's really just talking about rezoning this section. So I'm comparing what could be developed on the site research and development space versus what could be in, on here for residential. The residential traffic patterns are completely different than office and research and development, where people are trying to leave the area in the morning and come back in the afternoon, which is totally different. So it kind of mixes in well with the existing uses out here today is that if it is residential, it has a reverse travel pattern as what is currently zoned for with like a research and development space. Did I answer your question? I want to make sure that I'm, <laughs> I'm addressing you. No, that's helpful to know about the different uh, traffic patterns. Um, I don't know oh. if how familiar you are with... Alderman County, you got to come back to the chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, My sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My mistake. <laughs> Follow up. Mr. Yes, Truman? that's fine. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, what are the primary concerns of more residential traffic being in that area and how that stresses or doesn't stress the Spitbrook Road area in question? So one, one of the items that, um, that was, is being contemplated that we're proposing to do is if you look at Spitbrook Road at Tara Boulevard, that signal there, um, on the south side it's Villa Way, so it's a signal lines intersection, going right along, if you're going eastbound, kind of headed toward uh, exit one. Um, you know, you're passing Press Cafe and that strip mall there. You have an exclusive left turn lane that goes onto 
uh, Tara Boulevard, you have a single through lane that's coming across the intersection. But on the other side of the intersection, as you're continuing eastbound toward um, exit one, you have a two lane receiver. So there's kind of like a little bit of an imbalance. You have one lane that's opening up into two lanes. Um, as what's proposed is to be able to provide an additional through lane prior to the signal. So that's a continuous cross section um, going in the eastbound direction. So you'd have a left turn lane and two through lanes. Whereas the outside lane at the curb would be, you know, you'd be able to go straight through or actually turn right onto Villa Way as well. So it's, what that does is that that provides more capacity in the intersection. What does that all mean? Without getting too technical, if, you have, if your traffic volumes are not changing, going eastbound through, that are heading toward the interchange, and they're in one lane today, and that volume doesn't change, you're gonna provide them with two lanes, they need less green time to be processed through the intersection. Because you have two lanes now carrying the same amount of volume as opposed to one lane. So that means that green time can be saved and given to different approaches and make it more efficient as far as the operations of the intersection. Great, thank you. That was, I appreciate that. Anyone else have a question for the speaker? Alderman Tiva? Well, not for Jason in particular. Oh, I have a question for the speaker. Oh, okay, good. On, you're working on both developments, the other one as well that Ms. Hart mentioned? I am. I think um, the overall theme was they're concerned about both being built close together and they do would impact each other even though they are two separate developments. I think I just want to be fair to Ms. Hart. Oh, a absolutely. So, I mean, we're here tonight just to talk about the rezoning, yeah. not about the traffic impacts. That's, that's definitely going to be something we take a look at. Mm -hmm. We're already preparing a traffic study for that other development. Um, we do not trigger the warrants, the, the traffic impact report threshold warrants for a traffic study for that other development because it does not trigger the peak hour or the daily thresholds for a traffic study. Mm -hmm. And that's based on the city's guidelines. However, we're still putting together a traffic study. We're working with the city engineer and the city traffic engineer, um, putting together the scope. We've had a neighborhood meeting, you know, just to be able to identify what the issues are. And we're taking a look at that. We're in the process of preparing that right now. So we are moving forward with that. I just didn't want to muddy the waters by mixing the conversations in when we are just talking about rezoning this portion. That project is underway as far as the traffic study is concerned for that of the development. All right. Thank you. So no other questions for the speaker. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Clemens actually had his end up next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, hearing everything <clears throat> um, and knowing how the process works, I am in favor of, of this um, being rezoned without any stipulations by the Board of Aldermen. I think um, that's why we have a planning department. That's why we have a planning board. And I think that it's, um, you know, we have to have faith in our zoning laws um, and we have to have faith in our planning board to do the right thing. Um, you know, the, the question to me is, do we want residential in that section and that's the question that I'm answering tonight and for me I think it's a good opportunity to open that up um, we need more uh, residential areas in the city um, I think the fact that there is a company willing and ready to do that um, you know, gives us hope that um, we'll be able to meet that, some of our capacity needs that we've identified in the master plan. Um, and so I'm in favor of doing this, but without any, any restrictions. I think that the um, planning board should uh, be the ones to, to look at the individual plan itself, whatever that may be, whether it's this or if they change it to something else, that's fine. Thank you, Alderman Clemens. Alderman <laughs> Yeah, I got a few things. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I got a few things, but I'll, I'm going to start with uh, asking if, if our, our own city traffic engineer, Dan Hudson, can speak a little bit to this uh, plan that we got, because I, I believe he at least looked at the traffic plan or maybe uh, actually uh, is the one that worked on it. Um, so I don't know if, if Mr. Hudson can speak. I know you're here. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Dan. Dan Hudson, city engineer. Um, I, uh, uh, like others, I'm not opposed to this uh, development or even this rezoning. 
Um, but I have a lot of unanswered questions. Um, I think Jason described, you know, at, at accurately what uh, one of the proposals as we talked about, which was adding a, you know, eastbound through lane on Spitbrook Road. Um, I attended my first meeting on this project before I was, was officially employed here back in late 2019. And that's about the time the trip generation memo that's referenced was developed. Um, a lot has changed since that time. Some things have uh, been developed in accordance with what was envisioned and some things haven't. <clears throat> so there's a lot of uh, unanswered questions. Uh, for, for a couple of years, we were working through developing a development agreement and we're trying to develop a framework where there was surety around some of those, uh, some of those things. Um, so I don't know, uh, you know, it's, a, it's uh, unfortunate that that kind of hit a pause and, and maybe that'll be addressed as part of the planning board process, which is fine. Um, but it's well known, Spitbrook's a busy road. Um, we do need housing, uh, more housing will add traffic. So there will need to be some mitigative measures um, and some have been referenced, but as they say, the devil's in the details. So I look forward to working through those details um, as, as the uh, proposals, the, the official proposals come forward. Follow up. Follow up, yeah. Um, so you said, you mentioned, and I knew it because I, I have the proposal, but you said the, the trip generation was done back in 2019. So now we're talking, you know, three years ago. Um, we've seen like, you know, BJ's gas station approved, no problem, no traffic. And then there was traffic and now there's even more because of the gas prices. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to, to understand that. Are we doing something else before, you know, if say, say we approve it and then it goes to the planning board and they approve it, will there be another traffic study or are we really gonna rely on the, the one from 2019? Um, when it when it goes to planning board, I, I for one, will be requesting, uh, you know, full traffic study for whatever it is proposed. I mean, we're presuming it will be the uh, just under 300 units that's been talked about, but, it, but as Mr. Sullivan noted, it could be something different. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, that, that is, uh, I would expect that would be studied as part of the uh, planning board process in detail. Thank you. Any other questions? Alderman Jetting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I, I'm not uh, on this committee, but um, when I read uh, the letter from Mr. Sullivan uh, Engineer Hudson and uh, uh, Director Cummings. Um, you know, the, uh, I'm looking at the final paragraph, the recommendation, and uh, forgive me for reading it, uh, but uh, should the board, board of Aldermen, via re the referral from the PEDC and the Planning Board, choose to approve the proposed petition for rezoning, we recommend that any such approval should be made subject to a condition that the city and applicant enter into a master development agreement. Such agreement would provide a permissive regulatory environment for the proposed development and appropriately mitigate the offsite impact of the project, including but not limited to traffic improvements on Spitbrook Road and wastewater disposal upgrades as necessary. The agreement would also be based upon a master development plan that could be amended from time to time, but would guide the development of the flatly owned properties in the Gateway Hills area. Further, we recommend that the Board of Aldermen delay any action on the petition until such time as the staff demonstrates support for the rezoning based on the recommendations contained herein. So I, I read that to, um, to the, you know, our, you know, the uh, three uh, staff people telling us that they would, it sounds like they want us to delay this. I would, re if it's gonna be delayed, <clears throat> I'm a great believer in committee work, as you heard. And uh, I don't, you know, I wouldn't want you to send it to the full board of aldermen and expect further work to be done on this there, mm -hmm. because as you saw the other night, it um, mm -hmm. you know it's it's not the best way to vet uh, legislation. Now I've I've got great respect um, 
for uh, Attorney Prunier. And when Attorney Prunier says, and he's been doing this longer than I have, um, when he says that, you know, the, the zoning, you know, the zoning is zoning, you can't attach conditions to it, you can't, you know, expect other things are gonna be done, that, you know, that, he says, is, is appropriately the job of the planning board. So what he's asking us to do is say, okay, yeah, we're gonna change this from park industrial, which doesn't allow multifamily housing, to uh, residential C, which does allow multifamily housing. So once we do that, then they'll make a proposal as to what they're planning on doing for multifamily housing in, in, on that land, and then it would go before the planning board. Now, I also have great respect for Mr. Sullivan. You know, he may be young, but I'm very impressed with the work that he's done for the city so far. And he's saying that conditions can be attached. And, um, you know, I'm, I don't know that, you know, I certainly am not able to know who's right. Um, and uh, I don't know if, if the committee feels that it can make that decision, but, you know, would it make sense uh, to, uh, you know, involve our city attorney to help guide us, you know, uh, you know, what's, what's right? Is, is, is the zoning question, like Attorney Prunia points out, just a question of do you want this to be RC zoning or do you want it to leave it as park industrial? Do you think we need park industrial land and for it to remain that way? Or do you feel that, you know, we need more housing this is a good place to get it, so we ought to change this to residential C to, to allow that housing. Now the details of whatever project they, they, they want to put forward you know, would, would then go before the, uh, the planning board. Um, so, um, so Attorney Prunier is saying you know, we can't put conditions on it. It's either yes, we recommend the zoning change or we don't. Um, and I would like to know from, uh, from Attorney Bolton, you know, uh, is that right? You know, do, is, is that our sole purview here or your sole purview? And when it gets to the full board, I'll be participating. You know, is it, uh, you know, are we just deciding whether it should be rezoned or not? And then, you know, leave these other things to go before the planning board, you know, or is Mr. Sullivan correct in that we can attach conditions and, and we can require, you know, a, a master development plan to be formed before we, uh, we make the decision about the zoning. So I, I guess we could say, well, we're not prepared to change the zoning until we know you have a better idea, you know, a bigger picture as to what's going to happen there. But so I, I guess I think I've probably talked long That's enough. But very reasonable logic, Alderman Jetting. Um, Alderman Clemens. Uh, thank you. With all due respect to Alderman Jetty, I think the uh, the real question is whether we want to attach any conditions to it. And personally, I I wouldn't want to see us do that because I don't see us being the place. This isn't the committee or the forum for that type of thing, in my opinion. Um, the planning board is. So unless we want to introduce legislation to get rid of the planning board, I would suggest that we just pass this uh, zoning change if that's what we feel we want to do um, and leave it to them to look at any individual plan that may come up. Maybe I'm more laissez-faire than most people. Alderman O'Brien and Alderman Cowan. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I, I hear what Alderman Jardy is saying, but if the question before us is to rezone it from park industrial to residential, to me it's somewhat of a no-brainer, when particularly you look at access. Now, the, from Spitbrook Road, the access is off of Digital Drive. There's already a development there. So if it remains as park industrial, I'm sure the people who live there in the residential format do not want trucks going up and down their street. In the same token, looking at Timberline Drive, 
which is also the back entrance to that area, that is also residential. And again, um, I don't think they would like to have commercial vehicles up and down. So the thing is, it probably started in the night in early 80s or perhaps even earlier uh, to be park industrial. But looking at it now, since the inception of Timberline Drive, I remember when Timberline Drive didn't exist. We're talking an area where I used to fight brush fires and some of them were pretty big. But the thing is, it's changed. You know, I remember Clearview and Aaron when that was, you know, desolation. But it is now a residential neighborhood. So I think we should carry on. And I think the question basically is, is just rezoning this evening and looking at it. And I think the inter park industrial, that day is gone. And I think we ought to carry on with the uh, residential. Thank you. Thank you, um, Alderman O'Brien. Alderman Cathy? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this might be slightly off topic, but I did want to address it just because a member of the public asked, and so I felt it fair to at least come up with an answer if we can. <clears throat> uh, they talked about the inclusionary zoning, and we, I know we passed an ordinance for inclusionary zoning, so it sits where it sits now. I'm fairly certain, but there are people that are wiser than I in the room that could speak to whether or not you could change the, I, the AMI of the inclusionary zoning, if that's even a possibility, but I'm pretty sure that would require further legislation to do that. So it's um, not necessarily in line with what we're doing in this particular process affecting this particular development, but maybe developments down the road, just because of it, we just can't change the AMI because it's an ordinance driven uh, structure. Am I correct in that, in that process? Does anyone know? We don't have Attorney Bolton here to answer the okay. question. I don't want to. I just wanted to put it out there, argument. so it's on the record. Um, I'll look into it myself and try yeah. and figure that out. Uh, I did have another, if I may, another, Follow up, yeah. another thought. Yeah. <clears throat> to Alderman Clemens' point, I, I understand. I was, I'm on the planning board, um, and when they spoke about it, they respectfully did not attach a recommendation because they felt that that was outside their purview at that given time, and then they kicked it up to us. Um, to allow us to attach recommendations if we want to. I'm not necessarily against approval without a recommendation. My preference would be, I mean, sorry, approval without a, a stipulation. My preference would be if we're not going to have any requirements attached, that there be some note or notice to the Board of Aldermen and subsequently the Planning Board about these types of discussions, that that would be something that needs to be heavily looked into because if you do read the letter, the, our planning board has sort of already spoken about this or our planning department, sorry. And that is their recommendation as a whole. They would like us to look at requiring certain things. And as the PEDC as part of the Board of Aldermen, it sort of falls on us to figure that out. Now, obviously there are some questions as Alderman Jetty mentioned to, to Attorney Bolton that we may be stepping outside of purview, we may not. So we may need to table to clarify that first but the preference would be to attach a stipulation because that's that's our job now obviously we could kick it we could pass it it could go to zoning board and when they present a development we could attach a requirement there it could be but um if we have the opportunity to do that now or at least make the board of aldermen and the planning board aware for the future i would prefer that so i don't know if you could notate that footnote that i don't know how that process works but that's that's where i'm at Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, since this is my ward, I'm going to take a few minutes to say a few things. So um, <laughs> um, I just want to say, uh, you know, Matt may be young and hard nosed, but uh, he's doing a great job back there. So thanks, Matt. Um, so uh, I don't really understand, I guess, why it was kicked up to us just to determine if they can go from park industrial to residential. I mean, isn't that something the planning board should decide? Like, why are we deciding that, I guess? I don't know. Um, and maybe that's something I need to learn why it would be kicked to us just to decide that. So why would I get into the issues of, of my ward if that's the only thing we're really looking for? Because something's gonna be built there. It's just deciding which thing. Um, I've done a lot of work on this. I've, you know, I've uh, you know, talked to Matt and Tim about it. I've, uh, I went to Bicentennial School to figure out if we had an influx of children 
way more than what they're saying? Could we, could they take those kids to school? And the principal said, yeah. Problem is, is, you know, pickup line and drop off line backs up Spitbrook, down, down Spitbrook. So that's a problem that, you know, I would want addressed. And I know we've talked about traffic and I think Flatley had said that they would do traffic work that they said they didn't have to do. So I think that would be, be helpful too. But, you know, the, the one thing that, that kind of bothers me about the whole thing is, um, you know, I, I took this job and before I took this job, I had met with the mayor. The mayor said Flatley doesn't have a master plan. I met with Tim and Matt. Flatley, they haven't had a master plan. They never had a master plan for that whole area. Met with Matt again. Flatley doesn't have a master plan. I met with Kevin Walker from uh, Flatley. I met him in his office off Spitbrook to go over this proposal that we got. And he said, no, nah, we don't have a master plan. And then like a surprise in a TV show, attorney Prunier comes on and goes, yeah, I got a master plan right here. And then he pulls out a big thing. I got a master plan right here. So my Ward 8 people who are listening to me right now, who, who I've been saying to them, no, I've been trying to get a master plan. We don't have one. They're looking at me going, he's, he's not being uh, upfront with us. And I absolutely am. And you can talk to, to everybody else I just mentioned. Never a master plan has been mentioned. And in the last planning board, if I remember correctly, Mr. Sullivan, Director Sullivan, did say that it was, it was or somebody else did say on the planning board, I think it was the head of the planning board, said, we would like a master plan. And so that is a stipulation, I think, to, to doing this whole development. Because what happens if you have 400 acres that still need to be developed, including that 58 uh, home development off Shadowbrook and Spindlewick and Timberline, we have to know what the whole plan's gonna be. Because at the end of the day, it's gonna take up water resources and school resources and traffic resources. And if we keep doing this piecemeal, what, what, what's going to happen? We're not going to know that impact. And then all of a sudden it's all built and the, the, the neighborhood's a mess. And so that's why we stress so much that we need a master plan. We need to know what's going to go in there. And again, you know, you gave us this great proposal and, you know, I was happy to read it. And we, it's out in the, the notes today. Anybody can look, go into the uh, meeting and look at it. But, you know, like Mr. Sullivan, Director Sullivan said, you know, it doesn't really mean anything. One, it's three years old. And two, you guys could just throw this out and do something completely different. So those are the concerns I have. Uh, I'm all for affordable housing. I don't think, honestly, I don't think Flatley would go down to 50% if they could, um, if that's allowable. I don't think they would go down. We'd have to, to make a, a law or something, um, or an ordinance. But I do believe we do need affordable housing. We do need something built, but I just wanna make sure we're thinking about everything that we need to before we just throw this up there because it impacts that whole area. And I guess, you know, to Alderman Clement's point, is if that's not what we're here to debate tonight, we're just here to debate the, the zoning piece of it, then I guess there's no real reason to go any further. And I, I hope we can talk about this in the future, but if it just goes to the planning board and the planning board decides what to do, then it's out of our hands. So I've said what I've said, and you know, hopefully that, that clears my, my thoughts up on it. Alderman O'Brien. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We've, ha we've had this before, come before infrastructure many times, and it does get a little confusing, the chicken of the egg. But uh, keep in mind, to avoid spinning the wheels, uh, Mr. Sullivan's here in this room. So if the chair do or does allow, I would recommend that both Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Uh, Cummings come up, have a seat in the chamber, uh, particularly, and they could give a report and answer to Alderman Jetty's concerns and to all our concerns. In other words, our resource is right here. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Why, why don't we have you two both come up and have a seat in Alderman Clemens? Uh, thank you, yeah, just to answer uh, Alderman Tebow's, uh, one of Alderman Tebow's questions. Um, the reason it, the, the, the ordinance, so the Board of Aldern creates the zoning maps, so we're changing the maps because the Planning Board can't do anything without the Board of Aldermen's authority to change the map. So that's the reason that question is here and that's essentially what um, the crux of it is, is is we're changing the the map I think director Sullivan probably will want to change the map with a condition on it but um, but I'll let him speak to that and director Sullivan you've been acquitted, treated quite harshly tonight hopefully <laughs> the remainder of the day won't be as harsh 
Would you like me to speak to some of the questions yes, that have arisen? Um, so uh, let me first actually address the inclusionary zoning question that arose a few minutes ago. Uh, an amendment to the requirements or the thresholds within the inclusionary zoning can only be achieved one of two ways. One being an action by the Board of Aldermen to actually amend that section of zoning. The other being a clear requirement within a development agreement that the Board of Aldermen ultimately approve. So those are the two mechanisms that we could actually bring those AMI, AMI thresholds down to 50% for a given development or for the community as a whole. Uh, speaking specifically to Alderman Jetty's comments about the legality uh, of adding conditions to a rezoning. Uh, I'm certainly not an attorney, and so I don't want my comments to be treated as, as legal advice, of course, but my understanding is that conditions can be attached. It is somewhat unusual to do so, but they can be added. What I would recommend specifically as part of the memo that was written is that if the Board of Aldermen, the PEDs here, are interested in pursuing those conditions, those would actually be provisions of zoning that would be added to the RC district that's being contemplated this evening. And so it would actually be codification within that, that district that would achieve those goals. Uh, that would be the best mechanism to do that. Uh, I believe there are other questions that have arisen. Those are the two that I want to speak to directly to start the conversation, but thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for inviting us up, and thank you, Mr. Chair, for having us for some discussion. Mr. Cummings, do you have anything? I'm sorry, Director Cummings, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I, uh, thank you very much. I want to note for the record that uh, Director Sullivan was called hard-nosed for the first time ever. I wasn't referenced as hard-nosed, <laughs> so uh, I feel like this is a special evening, a special, <laughs> special evening tonight. Um, and talented, sorry. Yeah. Just, uh, talented, <laughs> very, very talented, and young, and young. Uh, Alderman uh, O'Brien. Oh, do you, uh, Oh, I th okay. I, if I may, Mr. Chair, yes, I, I do want to just address one point that was discussed earlier, because um, I believe it will help provide some clarity to the overall conversation. If you were to look at this as a linear line, zoning would be first along the line. And then what traditionally happens after the zoning changes is you have the site plan review process. And that would be the next step in the line. And then you have other permitting processes that typically happen as you go through the land use approval process. What specifically the staff is asking for is actually something that is pretty common in communities that allow development to occur, which is we're looking for a development agreement and we're looking on some sort of agreed to parameters because we're, go we're doing this zoning change. So as you're looking at this linear line, what, what Matt is suggesting, what Director Sullivan is suggesting, and what I've recommended in the correspondence that you have before you, is that before you get to the site plan process, you insert another obligation, which is that, the, that a concept plan and a development agreement be, be agreed to before you gain access to the site plan review process. So when you're asked, why are we here to actually do that? It's because it's this body that has the jurisdiction and the purview to actually insert those types of conditions to create that type of process. Because if you allow it to go forward, absent that, you're then just going straight to the site plan process. I believe Alderman Cappy asked a very specific question as to whether there was strict criteria for review. And my answer to that would be during a site plan process, absolutely. And some of the criteria that we would be looking for in that zoning language might not be actually permissible in a site plan process, which is why you do it during the zoning review process. So those are some of the reasons why we felt it was important to have at least staff's uh, comment on the record. Ultimately, as the policymakers, it's your decision to, to do with this as, as you wish. I just have an obligation to point out to you that I believe the city of Nashua deserves better when it comes to development. Some of the way other communities are actually achieving that is by doing these sort of things. And so I wanted to just make sure it was clear that these are some of the suggestions to improve upon uh, the language that's before you, because I do think that this is a good development. I overall think we should be pursuing this, but I just think it needs to be done in a right way. Thank you. Alderman O'Brien. Uh, thank you. And uh, to that answer, Mr. Sullivan or Mr. Cummings, uh, you bring up a very good explanation, but we're here looking in, uh, for advice on this particular. Uh, we're the policy committee granted, but again, we're not into the zoning and we're not into the planning. Uh, we don't know the traffic and everything else. So with that in mind, to really throw the dot right at the bullseye here, 
which your recommendation is to pass this tonight and then work on it at a later date, or which your recommendation would be to table it until a different, uh, additional study could be done on this particular bill. And we're looking for that professional input. I mean, we are the policy, but we're looking at you as the experts on, on the particular matter. Yes, my, my recommendation would be is you table this evening until there's a language that could be agreed to to allow for some of the elements that I've discussed previously to be included in, in the uh, zoning. Otherwise, I don't know if you'll actually be able to achieve some of the goals that we've articulated. Okay, Director Sullivan. I would just add, I also believe there is a legal question that's been raised this evening that we could uh, posit to Corporation Council for guidance on relative to the addition of conditions to a rezoning. Certainly we could seek uh, the advice of Corporation Council on that matter as well as part of those discussions. Alderman Tebow and then Alderman Kaplan. Um, if I could ask a question to either Director Sullivan or, or Director Cummings. Um, so the master plan that uh, Attorney Prunier put out there today, have you guys seen it and does it fit, if you have seen it, does it fit what you guys were looking for in a master plan? I'm happy to answer that first. I, I have not seen that plan, but I want to be clear. Attorney Pronier is absolutely correct. I do not have the history with this property that others have, and certainly not that many of the audience, many in the audience have. I don't believe that I have seen that plan. That may be based on my research and not the applicant's efforts. So I have not seen it, but there may be reasons for that. I, I don't know. I, I would need to look at it closer before I answer that. I have seen Hold plans on. over the years, but the critical element there is there's actually nothing to hold that plan accountable which is ultimately what we're driving at. Uh, thank you. I'm good. Oh, you good. Thank you. Alderman Kathy and Alderman O'Brien. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to Mr. Sullivan's comments about codification, are you then saying that the codification would apply to all of those zones across the city and not this specific area that we're talking about? So if we strike some sort of development agreement attached to the rezoning, then we're going to have to deal with this if we have a development across town that might not, it might not be applicable to that particular situation? The, the answer is no. There are two strategies to achieve it. I would direct it specifically to the geography that's being discussed, okay. not only as part of this rezoning, but also as, as part of the flatly owned properties generally. There are two mechanisms for that, either as sub-language within the RC district or the creation of a, a, a new, essentially an overlay to overlie the RC district that would encompass these properties. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman O'Brien. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, to courtesy to others here, I'm about ready to go into my parliamentary whirlwind here. So everybody's all set with their questions before I start. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I would like to be recognized to uh, withdraw my motion of uh, to recommend granting of the petition for rezoning. And if I may be recognized for a motion of a higher power. So recognized. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to make a motion to table this particular matter until uh, we have further review. Discussion, you want to speak on your uh, You can't discuss tabling. Oh, okay. That's that's why I... Are there questions allowed for tabling? Mm -mm. No, mm -hmm. once the table, that's why I asked. Okay, Because by parliamentary, and there's a point, excuse me, may I have yep. personal privilege okay. to yes, thank sir. you. It is parliamentary procedure. But once a tabling motion, that's the highest priority motion, you cannot discuss a tabling motion. So that's why I ask. I, if you really have something to say, I could withdraw the table. But it, the purpose is once you have the tabling motion, there's no discussion. It and was, even me explaining this is at a, yeah. some risk. But. Well, <laughs> uh, parliamentary, yes, parliamentary inquiry. So, uh, you, you can make parliamentary inquiries. So if you're if you're not sure what the the, the, the result, table, you traditionally go right for the vote. Right, but you can make you can ask. A you can parliamentary say. Oh, you could do a PI if you want to. You yeah. know. So Correct. that's what I was getting at. A PI. Yeah. Par yeah. PI. Parliamentary inquiry, yes. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, when we table, when we say for further review, do we have to be specific about the review we're looking for? Because I know we want to talk to or we want to get Corporation Council involved or other, some other processes that we want to address. So I didn't know how specific that tabling motion needed to be, or if it just table it and then we figure it out later. Good, good question. Uh, I think the chair 
And if he wants help with this, I'd be willing to help, you know, and everything. But basically, this is what a chairman would do. Do some of the background homework, have communication with Director Cumming and, of course, with Mr. Sullivan, the principals in this particular matter. And then after bringing it back, they'll bring back, like I said the other night at the infrastructure PEDC meeting, uh, right now we got an empty plate. The chairman will try to put something on the plate that we'll be able to, you know, look at and to discuss. So uh, bring it back and you'll have something. Then the traditional vote then at that particular time by the board would be to remove from the table and to discuss, you know, whoever's bringing forward the particular changes. Thank you. Uh, PI for myself, I don't mind doing that. Um, I will do that uh, and get clarification from uh, Corporation Council and speak to Director Sullivan and Director Cummings. And, um, you know, I'm very supportive of the tabling motion at the moment. So we'll do a roll call, or do you want uh, everyone's present so we can go by voice vote? Uh, all in favor of, of t tabling uh, the petition for rezoning signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. The ayes have it. All right. So I think we'll go back into order and have uh, recognized Director Cummings to provide economic development update on various projects. Yes, if I may, Mr. Chairman, and I know we're getting late into the evening here, so I, um, I'll keep my comments brief. I, I wanted to come before you really to start a conversation, and I'm sharing my screen here. Uh, again, Tim Cummings, Director of uh, Economic Development. I. Um, I wanted to, sorry, I was just giving a second for the room to clear. Oh, you guys can you still don't, stay. You don't, have to. you don't have to leave. No, no. You don't. I, um, I wanted to come before you this evening to really start a conversation. Um, I'm not looking to get any answers this evening, but um, I've spoken to some of you uh, individually. Uh, but uh, I thought it would be good to also just come before you and uh, ask, ask you um, basically um, what are you thinking for some new projects and some new ideas uh, that uh, the Office of Economic Development should prioritize? Um, we are um, finishing up some projects that were highlighted as priority projects, um, particularly the uh, Performing Arts Center and the School Street Development. Uh, are well underway. Um, rail was, you know, another project, a, a priority project for us that is uh, continuing on. It's mainly a state-level driven process. Um, obviously, we would, we we would still be committed to doing that. But I wanted to, as we started a new session, uh, have a conversation with with you all as to what maybe you'd like to see my office work on. And so um, that that is the point of. Uh, this evening's conversation. Um, I, I think that if you could either this evening tell me a little bit about what you'd like to see prioritized for economic development, uh, or if you'd like to individually meet with me to discuss it, I'll come back. I will summarize, develop some additional priorities as highlights. We work on many different things. By no means what I'm suggesting here um, would be the only things my office would work on. Uh, of course, we have a lot more things that we work on than just this, but special priorities that uh, really will help improve the, ac the economy and the community of Nashua is what I'm really trying to get at here this evening. Um, and so with that being said, I thought also it might help to kind of talk a little bit about some general updates on some, pro some projects that I'm currently working on that um, you all may hear about. A lot of the projects I work on are uh, highly visible um, and sometimes sensitive. And uh, I know you're asked often about these individual projects. And so I'm always available to provide, you know, status updates and give you the latest in terms of what's happening. And I welcome always input to try to craft a better project uh, or program to, to advance uh, the community here in Nashua. So um, first and foremost, the Elm Street Middle School, you may have seen recently an advertisement where we're gonna have a town hall meeting uh, March 30th. Um, I want to make sure everyone is well aware of that. That's where the architects and the consulting team will be uh, participating virtually with the community and we are encouraging virtual participation. 
though there will be a physical location for the meeting here in the City Hall Auditorium. And we're gonna be seeking input from the community. Um, we did this very similar to the Milliard concept plan. We had a, a community meeting about a month and a half ago where we had a similar type of interaction with various stakeholders uh, to specifically talk about the NIMCO property uh, as we get ready to, to look at developing plans for both projects. Uh, both, both, both have been expressed as priorities. The Elm Street Middle School is one that I am particularly sensitive to because it is a very highly visible and I think there's some strong sentimental attachments to this property. So I really am trying to encourage strong public participation as well as trying to get some clear direction as to what the community really wants to do with that, with that land and in that building. Um, the Keefe Auditorium is there. I have heard along the way that it seems to be a preference that this community has to preserve the Keefe Auditorium. And so I've given that clear instruction to the consulting team already. Um, what we've learned is to do that, um, there may be some capital costs associated with that endeavor. And I wanna make sure this community is well aware of, of some of the obligations that may be coming about if we so endeavor to, to do that. Um, uh, so again, the Elm Street Middle School, March, March 30th, uh, it's the start of the project. Uh, Milliard concept plan is underway. We had one town hall type meeting. We'll probably have another one in a couple weeks. We're making good progress on that. The consulting team is really working internally to develop uh, what I believe has, has resonated to the top, and I, this is subject to change, but it looks like it will be a uh, recommended to, as the highest and best use for that land as a multifamily type of uh, development, um, and uh, and there'll be there'll be more to come on the, on that Nimco property, uh, the Performing Arts Center, which uh, we now refer to as the Nashua Center uh, for the Arts, um, is well underway uh, construction wise. Um, I'm getting reports that the schedule is slipping a little bit, nothing uh, dramatic. We were expecting a fall opening. I think we're probably looking more at a December opening right now. We're on budget um, and uh, we're really uh, getting through the toughest parts of the construction project right now uh, from, an, uh, from, from the hard construction. We'll be moving more into uh, equipment and fit up type uh, construction as the spring as the spring moves along and uh, again we are still uh, we're still bogeying uh, an opening for for uh, you know sometime in calendar year 22 but I think it will probably be uh, December um, as as a, we originally were anticipating somewhere somewhere in uh, early fall uh, downtown riverfront TIF uh, continues to move along um, we are under permitting uh, for that project right now. The Board of Aldermen approved a, 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 a contract for VHB to do the environmental permitting. That is well underway. I'm hoping that we will have all our permits in hand by the end of the summer. And we would look to um, uh, start construction actually uh, in, in earnest come this fall, but you may see us do some early release packages that don't require permits sometime this summer. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about that because I know that that's, uh, that's been a project that's been uh, long, long along the way and, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to tell you that there's been some forward movement on that recently. The last update I wanted to give you as quickly is the Mohawk Tannery. So this has been a, a conversation that has come up through the community uh, on and off over the last five or so years that there is still a development team uh, led by Bernie Plant He's recently brought in a co-developer, um, Thorndike Development. And some of you may know him because he expressed an interest in a development in the uh, north end of the city. A very well-respected developer to help him along in the project, uh, uh, with this project. Um, they are making strong inroads of putting a financial plan together. I'm having almost weekly phone calls with them to uh, develop a, a plan that I think the, the Board of Aldermen, the city of Nashua, and uh, and uh, ultimately the developers will, will find as, as uh, a positive solution. It is definitely not a, a win for everyone. There's gonna be a lot of compromise here, um, but it does look like there's a, a pathway forward to get the site cleaned up and to put housing on the site. Um, and so there'll be more details in the coming, 
coming weeks and months on this project, uh, but it's, it's one that has been slowly coming together and it's, in, it's sped up only within the last two months or so. And I wanted to just re-put that on the radar for folks because I know we haven't really talked about it in a, in a really long time. I'm sure there's other updates I could provide you. So I wanted to kind of stop there and ask you all if you had specific economic development or community development related uh, projects that you wanted to hear about. I wanted to obviously touch upon them if there was something of interest. Thank you, Director Sullivan. I just have one question. Uh, when we met, um, feels like a year ago now, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I talked about the uh, micro grant idea. Would that, I can't remember, was that your department or? A, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that two ways. Yes. So um, depending on the funding source you use, yeah. CDBG is the more traditional place, which would fall under community development with Director Sullivan, um, for those micro grants, and that that typically happens actually at the board of aldermen level. You really see that through uh, human affairs and uh, CIC. Um, you what would typically happen is, and we're in a little bit of a of a hybrid system right now because our really well-respected urban programs manager left the city. Her, her name was Carrie Skeena. So we're, we're in the process of replacing uh, uh, Carrie. I don't know if she can be replaced, but nonetheless, we're trying to. Um, but um, what would happen is the person in that position would put a call out to the departments and the various departments would submit various projects or programs that would be coupled together and basically put before this body with a list of other projects. Mm -hmm. uh, usually those come from outside City Hall. And so I say that to you because I would submit a request for $50,000, whatever that number is, um, to, to the urban programs. They would then go through and get it approved and then if it was successfully approved, they would come back to me and say the money will be available. Typically, they go through the approval in the spring. The money doesn't come available until the following fall, so November. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you'd start an application after that money was available in that November, December time period. And just for clarification, I was suggesting uh, to Director Cummings in um, our meeting of getting to know the directors, it's a micro grant, uh, forgivable grant, or it would turn into a loan if the person sold their home to replace old furnaces uh, and upgrade energy efficient stuff in um, low income to moderately priced people's homes. And so again, I was what I was specifically talking about is CDBG. Yep. Um, that would also be an expenditure that I think that our housing trust fund could actually take on as well. And that would be um, another avenue that we could pursue to deliver the same goal. Um, and we're in the midst of developing the, the specifics on that housing trust fund that we just created and we just got the uh, inclusionary or ordinance adopted that will provide us the funding. So I would think in the coming months, you're gonna start seeing us come before um, the various committees here at the Board of Aldermen with some of these proposals. Thank you, Director. Alderman Kathy. Thank you, Alderman Mr. Chair. Woman. Um, <clears throat> I'm happy about Elm Street. I'm, I'm really excited about that. I'll definitely be there. I, I think that's going to be a pretty cool thing. Um, just a few things. One, do you have any updates on Costco, where we're at with them? And uh, if, I mean, we're still they're still in the legal system right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've had people ask or request that there be more multi-use oh, space. Sorry. Oh, Get sorry. Right Mr. Chair, follow. Yes, yeah. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, I've had people talk to me about multi-use uh, zoning in the DW area, specifically maybe down by Trader Joe's, referencing London Dairy Commons, where we could build some residential space above those buildings. Um, if you could speak to that, give me some, give us some insight into that particular develop type of development. Oh, that's a great one. Well, that's a great question. And I would want to pull in Director Sullivan um, to kind of have this because it goes hand in hand with a lot of what he does. But I think uh, uh, the DW corridor, as well as Amherst Street, uh, but specifically for this conversation, the DW corridor is ripe for mixed use development and in particular becoming a little bit more pedestrian friendly to allow and encourage that type of development. We should be looking to put the infrastructure in place to encourage that type of development. Uh, I know uh, city engineer uh, Dan Hudson is on right now. We have internally started talking about this. 
the state actually has a transportation project in their 10 year plan that actually talks about the DW becoming a little bit more pedestrian friendly. All of these things are starting to come together. So um, a recommendation I would make to move this along would be some of the uh, planning studies that I've been doing specifically with the mill yard or with the, uh, or with the Elm Street Middle School. We may want to, uh, for short money, um, produce a plan just like that to actually have a more specific conversation in a little bit more granular detail than we did at the master plan level. And that would help inform a lot of our decision making. Those are called corridor studies, very common. And it would be the next step I would, uh, I would recommend us taking if there is an ambition by this community to, to look at uh, mixed use in the, in, the, um, in the DW corridor. I think it's well-timed, there's potentially rail coming in, as well as um, the mall. The, the million square foot shopping mall that's owned by Simon inevitably is going to change over the coming decades. It would be good for this community to be prepared for that and to start to anticipate some of those changes and, and have a plan in hand so we could, uh, you know, catalyze on it. Just one, one more follow up. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, to the mall point, I did have a developer contact me because I'm in that ward and ask for information about buying the mall. So, um, but the thing I wanted to mention is, do you have any, this is sort of like slightly adjacent or off topic, but there were talks of Amazon going into Hudson. Do you know where they're at with that? Because obviously that's gonna affect traffic in Nashua. Has Nashua been talking about that, looking at that? No. 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 Um, I can tell you Amazon is always looking. I can tell you I talk to Amazon regularly. I know Amazon is looking at another part of the city for distribution, but nothing in the DW area at this time. Okay, thank you. Alder one uh, at large, two minutes. Oh, thank you. Hi, Tim. Hello. I've been sitting over here listening. Well, I just, um, if you don't mind, Chairman, oh. it did, it's just, there's multiple questions, but I'm just gonna do two. All right, one is, I don't know where Mohawk Tannery is located. Where is it? Sure, great question. Uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Chair, I'll pull up my GIS system here. And we got all give, night. <laughs> if you give me a second. Because that's, that's a great question. Um, and I can talk a little bit about what I refer to as the Mohawk Tannery in case folks aren't familiar with it. I apologize. I kind of went into the conversation thinking everyone understood what I was saying. By the, by the reference. Um, so I am just pulling up the, the GIS right now. I'm sharing my screen. So if I use the term Little Florida to you, would you be familiar with that? Yes, I with know that exactly where that's located. Term? So it would be the most westerly end of, uh, of, of Little Florida. And uh, what I'm showing you right here is essentially the land area. Uh -huh. So it's these, it's particularly, specifically, uh -huh. this where my arrow is right here, it's this, this property. Oh, okay. Now to the, just the north, right here is referred to as Fimble Door. That was a former company that's no longer there. And they, they, own, they own this, and that would be part of the development as well. Uh, this is the uh, formerly the Broad Street Parkway. We now call it the Veterans Memorial Parkway right here. Um, but essentially it would be this, this, this land here, which is approximately 40 acres. Oh, okay. Um, and it housed the, the, the Mohawk Tannery at one time. And it is uh, an environmentally very sensitive area that um, I know the city has had a, a, a keen eye on it over the years. In fact, I believe the city uh, on their own endeavor actually spent money to demolish some buildings and helped to try to stabilize the area to, for, the, for the community's benefit. Do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, 
yes, it's not on the Mohawk Tannery. However, um, I do have a lot of young people in my family, a lot of kids. They says absolutely nothing to do in Nashua. And we talk about everything but um, some type of arcade or something for them, like between 18 and 25 age group. Okay. Can you speak on that? Um. I, I can't speak on it this evening, but I can absolutely add it to the list of, of potential ideas. When I'm talking to developers, they can explore. I think uh, what I'm hearing you say is like a Dave and Buster's concept. Yes. And um, I definitely have heard that, and I think that that would be a welcomed addition to, to Nashua. So um, I get asked by developers from time to time, what would the city like? And I'd be happy to uh put that put that idea in front of them okay and can i have one other question yes. too? Yeah. okay being um a lot of my constituents are seniors and they feel they feel left out they don't have adequate housing affordable housing you go on and on they're mm -hmm. complaining about so all this development we're talking about what is it for what do we have in there for senior citizens let's say 60 plus uh, or 55 plus. Do we have anything in the cost to, to increase housing for them or anything for them? I know we got the senior center, that's just one little avenue for them. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of baby boomers here. Okay. And um, they're asking questions too. Say, so what are you going to do for us? And I have no idea. <laughs> so, fair I'm enough. Just, you know, I just want to know what is in the cost building affordable housing for seniors or house I know you know that's not a good you know you guys are young and you know think that way but they think that way and they vote yeah understood and and, and I yes and I understand uh, that particular point the the first comment I would make is all our housing would be open to any any senior we are not we are not precluding seniors from you know, buying into Nashua, but I think specifically what you're asking about is affordable housing and particularly affordable housing for seniors, yes. which um, I know has been a priority uh, for the housing authority and I know it's a priority for us and we are, we are slowly and we need to do probably a better job, but we are working to try to address those issues I think over the coming year, you're going to see some various proposals that will hopefully help, but by no means will solve the problem. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Alder. Alder, <laughs> anyone, anyone else? Anyone else? No, I also have no questions. Thank you so much, Director Cummings. I do want to just say um, I had a conversation with um, uh, Alderman Sullivan, and he was on a little while ago. We had a really cool conversation about maybe we could market the city a little bit more. And I thought that that was a great idea. And so I wanted to kind of bring that to you all and think that, uh, and, and develop maybe some strategies where we could potentially market the city. And then he also mentioned, and I, I agree with him, um, you know, we need to talk about, you know, Daniel Webster and Amherst Street a little bit more than maybe what we've talked about in the past. And I hear that and I think, you know, I'd be welcoming the conversations to, 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 to that regard. Uh, I, I, you know, I know over the last few years, I've spent a lot of time focusing on the downtown. And I want to note for the record, we got through this whole conversation without talking about Main Street. So oh, I think that's a, I think that's pretty good. Well, we'll see what uh, Alderman Clemens has to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but nonetheless, um, I think, I think we, we have still more to do in the downtown, but we have definitely helped turn the corner with all the efforts and investments we've been making. The way I know this is I'm actually seeing developers making their own private investment. Good example, um, surf mm -hmm. on their own volition because they saw the, de uh, the development that was occurring on Main Street said, I need to do something. And they're on their own dime, decided to actually spend money to improve um, their own building and uh, invest in themselves. So I think that that is, that is wonderful. That makes me really happy to see as an economic development director. But I bring this, this up because I do think we should be starting to look at other corridors and asking ourselves, where do we want to develop? How do we want to develop? Let's follow the master plan that was developed. But that was the start of the conversation. 
and we have some areas that we could we could focus on just off the top of my head off of Amherst Street we have the former quote-unquote Walmart site um, that's a big area um, um, where we could potentially get some development uh, well, building 19 would yes, be good yes. to focus oh, on. Oh, is that Walmart? 19. Yeah, that's. Oh my God, Walmart. that's 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 the same site. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and that's off the top of my head. So anyway, um, the corridors, the Amherst corridor, the DW corridor, they are typically owned by very sophisticated real estate professionals, and so they're not going to need some you know young punk like myself like interfering with them. But we could definitely <laughs> figure out ways to to help help them facilitate conversations, work with them strategically for the city's benefit and, and, and for their benefit, so. Alderman Clemens. Yeah, in, in, just in response to the comments about marketing the city, when I was first elected to the Board of Aldermen in 2008, I, um, <clears throat> we, we at the end of my first term, we had a, uh, it was on a branding initiative uh, that the mayor at the time was very much for. Um, and we actually came up with a new brand for Nashua. And <clears throat> unfortunately, um, our current mayor was uh, elected to the Board of Aldermen in place of myself, and he, he killed that initiative um, back in the day. So I'd be very surprised to see if, we, if you had any forward movement on that or at least any support from the corner office on that. Of course, times change, people change. But um, there was a lot of money sunk into that project. I want to say it was fifty to $100,000 was sunk into that project probably in 2011. And uh, unfortunately, it, uh, a new board was elected and it faced a lot, of, a lot of resistance. The marketing effort that was supposed to take place never did. Um, and, you know, Nashua, I think, was set, set back by it. Uh, I, I do believe that we should be marketing uh, our city. I do think that we should make Nashua uh, and Main Street in downtown a destination. Um, I think we have opportunities with our casinos to do the same types of things. So I would be... Uh, open to that, and I would be cautiously optimistic to see where the administration would stand on such an endeavor. Director Sullivan, uh, Director Cummings. Yes, thank you. Um, I, my recommendation would be is we would, should be very strategic in our marketing plan and approach. Uh, the first thing I will tell you from an economic development perspective, um, you get very little return when you market. It's very, a, a, a municipality, a community, it's, it's um, you know, the statistics will tell you it's about a 10% return on all the money you invest. So, you know, one out of uh, 10 times or 10 out of 100 times, you might, you know, have some sort of success. So you're, you know, I say that to you because the metrics around it would need to be very uh, loose. Um, to claim success, but I do think, and I've seen this done in other communities where you can be very strategic in your marketing, where if we were very targeted in our approach, and I'm just gonna make this idea up, um, I've heard that we are really coming together to be a little bit of a brewery destination. Um, and if we could put some money, some token amount of money to, to, help, to help the seven or so breweries to get on the map so maybe people come and walk to the various breweries and do some brewery tours you know that is going to take a public effort to kind of do that type of marketing campaign but you could yield dividends and be in doing something very strategic like that for again what i would suggest would be short short money um that uh could have enormous potential one helping brand the city in a certain way and two helping some small businesses, you know, achieve a little bit more of the market share. It's wonderful that you say that because I wanted to open a brewery recently um, and I was stopped by my wife, who I think is coming <laughs> here. Um, she didn't want Wonderless Brewing. She would rather stick to counseling. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, brewery tours are great. People come all over. Anyone else have any questions? All right. We'll move on to uh, unfinished business. There being none, new business resolutions, none, new business ordinances, none, nothing tabled in committee. General discussion. 
Alderman Debo. I just got a couple things. So um, I just want to make sure it's clear that I'm for, um, you know, affordable housing. I'm for, uh, I'm for housing. Um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, we have to listen to our experts and, you know, Director Cummings and Director Sullivan uh, thought it was a good idea to table it. Um, I also felt, you know, a little bit, um, betrayed is probably too strong a word, but, I, you know, all of a sudden flatly surprises us with um, a master plan that I don't probably think is the real master plan we're looking for um, and puts it out in public to everybody think there's a master plan when there, there really isn't. Um, you know, that kind of uh, set me off when I, I really think that we're, we're trying to negotiate things on um, with uh, good intentions, right? To benefit all, right? To try to make this city a great place to live and we do need more housing, but it being my ward, I also have to make sure that I'm fighting for the people in that ward. And so I have to balance that out. So I wanted to make sure that, if, you know, I have to look at it differently than I may look at other wards. Um, but I just thought that, um, it, I just want to say that I am still for affordable housing and housing in general. I think we need more of it. Um, research and development is probably not the way to go. Um, and the last thing I just want to say, because we're, I mean, we have a ton of people here, right? Um, I just wanted to say that the Ukraine uh, flag raising this, this afternoon was amazing. Um, ton of turnout, um, ton of good. Um, we, had, we heard the Ukrainian anthem, which I, I know Alderman Jetty will tell you was awesome. Um, and I thought it was a really good event for some people who are struggling um, in their country and some people who have family back there. And uh, it was emotional and it was, um, it, was, it, was, it was very solemn hearing them pray. And uh, um, I just wanted to throw that out there that, that it, was, it was a good event. Oh, thank you. Any other general discussion? Yes, Alderman Jetty. Yeah, if I could, um, um, you know, I've, I've been a lawyer for a long time. I've, I've been before the zoning board. I've been before the planning board. And um, I would just like to, you know, I don't think I'm telling Alderman uh, O'Brien anything he doesn't already know. But, um, you know, I, I've seen many developers promise the world and uh, and reassure the planning board and the zoning board that everything is going to be wonderful and then after the uh, the permit is granted um, if it's not in writing if it's not specific you know if it can't you know, if you can't if you, if you cannot you know hold them to the specific language that you've incorporated in it um, it's not it's, it's never going to happen and I don't I'm not picking on any one developer. I've just seen it from um, from a lot of them, and um, and I'm not saying the people who appeared before us tonight are guilty of that, but just as a general rule, um, you know, it's said about a lot of things. You know, make sure you get it in writing, and uh, so that it can be enforced. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Alderman O'Brien. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, Alderman Jetty, I agree with you. I mean, many years in the past, we've seen many development, particularly in the early 80s. Uh, this city basically grew up. When I came up here in the early 80s, they rolled up Main Street at 6 o'clock at night, except for one night and one night only, and that was Thursday night. And uh, I'm sure Alderman Jetty remembers Meet you at Miller's was the catchphrase of one of the stores and everything. But then there was a building boom, and, and I think a lot of things did get out of control, such as maybe better traffic signals or looking at this. So I do appreciate you bringing that, and that's why I encourage Director Cummings and Director Sullivan to try to get the lawn dot on the, hit it on the bullseye, because what are you recommending? And, so let's work and see what we can get for the future and what we can carve out. And I agree with you. So thank you for bringing that up. You're welcome. Alderman Clemens. Just briefly, I, uh, I, I tend to approach these things a little bit differently. I'm a hands-off type of person. When I, was in, when I was the ward alderman for Ward 6, there was a number of developments that came up, including one within literally my own backyard that several of my neighbors wanted me to go and speak against and I refused to do it because I believe that we have a zoning board, we have a 
planning board for a reason. I think that those folks need to do their job and their due diligence, and we need to put our trust in them. Um, if I wanted to be on the planning board or the zoning board, I would have asked the mayor to appoint me. So it's just the way I look at it. Thank you. Alderman Kathy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> to echo Alderman Clement Simmons, I tend to be a less regulation heavy person as, as myself, but having been on the planning board and having to hear this discussion already, um, in my opinion, I think it's helpful to let the subsequent meetings and committees that are going to hear this know where, where we stand. Just, I'm more of a protectionist, so I want to make sure it's in writing and, and all the legalese is signed rather than, and I want to do that as quickly as possible and as soon as possible in the process. If that's going to happen, if it's not, then like Alderman Clement said, hands off. Um, I also wanted to mention, um, good job, first meeting. <laughs> Thank Way you. To go. Um, we'll, we'll all get there. And then what is the difference between general discussion and remarks by aldermen, since we're on the topic? Let Just, me try to answer, and I'm sure people will chime in. The script. Uh, I think we're, general discussion is talking about what was talked about tonight, and then general remarks might be just general things. <laughs> we could probably eliminate it. It's, sometimes I skip over it because uh, some aldermen in, in, you know, morph into it anyways. You know, I look for additional comments, none, then I skip over the second one because right. I think everybody had to say so. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping that we get to the end here and no one has any more comments. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, <laughs> w just learning the process, yeah. knowing what's in yeah, the Yeah, well, it's, it's, right. it's on the script, you know, when I hate to call it a script. The people are going to say, oh, the script, but it's actually an agenda, <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. it is part of me calling the script, but it's on the agenda and that's why it gets mentioned. Alderman Clemens. So it's, a, it's actually a little bit more, I mean, we're very informal, especially when you have a me meeting that goes like this and there's nobody here. But general discussion is, is generally for things that maybe came up in the meeting that you want to discuss a different topic or something for the next meeting. Um, and, the, and, it, and it comes before public comment. And the reason it comes before public comment is so that the public who may be here can comment on it, add to it, so add a suggestion. So if we say, you know, Director Cummings, I really like your idea about Elm Street School, you know, maybe we should add this part to it. If we say that in general comment, somebody else from the public can piggyback off of that. Um, add to it, make a suggestion. The remarks by aldermen are sort of a, um, our opportunity, if you will, to respond to public comment. Um, they're also our opportunity to get a final word in um, because we are the elected body and we should have the final word. Um, so that's sort of why there's two periods. I kind of agree with, with, um, Alderman O'Brien in that you don't necessarily have to be strict. You definitely have to have a second public comment period, no doubt about that. But you don't necessarily have to be so, we don't have to necessarily be so strict um, to follow it. The chairman has a lot of latitude. And I will say you have done a great job. So, so far. It's a, it's a tough, uh, I've been there before, I've chaired many committees and it's, it's not an easy, uh, not an easy task when you're doing it for the very first time. So you did a good job. Appreciate that. Alderman O'Brien. Just one thing to remind everybody that uh, tomorrow night uh, is going to be a continuing of the work session group of infrastructure with uh, PDEC, you know, this committee here. So it's going to be upstairs in the chamber immediately following the, because several members have dual duty, immediately following the finance committee meeting. That's it. All right. Any other comments? Alderman Jenny. How about a motion? Nope. Okay. No, we got to go to public when, comment. When Alderman O'Brien says upstairs in the chamber, is he talking about this? The, room? Uh, the, the auditorium. auditorium. The auditorium. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I just have one final thing to say that um, in general, I think it's okay when questions come up to get clearance, uh, guidance and ask questions before jamming things through. We don't need to send everything up 
to the full board without vetting stuff and following a process. So I, I, I'm glad that we tabled this tonight so we can get some clear answers and then come back, work it out with the, um, the directors and then send it back to BOA with an approval either way or no approval or with stipulations. So I do appreciate Alderman Jetty um, making those comments earlier today and other Alderman who mentioned the same, especially the passionate Ward, ward uh, 8, right? Nine. It's Ward 8. <laughs> 8, oh, Alderman. Um, all right. Public comment. Are there any members of the public that would like to add anything? Raise your hand. Going once, twice. Remarks by Alderman. I think we're all good on that one. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Alderman uh, O'Brien. I'll make a motion to adjourn. This meeting was declared closed at 8.50 p.m. Don't we have to vote on it?